Okay, Abutai, I want to share with you something that you might tell me, Rabbi, come on, what are you doing? We're not on these levels, what are you sharing with us? But everybody's on these levels on some level. Everybody's on this level on some level and everybody can gain. Hashem put us in this world to become, to walk in His ways. Hashem put us listen, in this world to walk in, in His ways, to be like Him, to emulate Him. Right? The way we, we have to walk in the ways of God. The more you walk in the ways of God, the more you perfect your neshama, the more your neshama connects to Hashem. How, what's the number one thing that you should want in your life in order for you to walk in the ways of God? What's the number one thing that you need to ask for? What's the number one thing? Chokhmah. What's the first thing we ask in Shmones after we praise Hashem? The first thing we ask Hashem is Why is that the first thing? There's so many other things that we can ask Hashem. Hashem, save your, save your children. With so many important mitzvahs that we're asking for. Bnei Yerushalayim, Bet Hamikdash. We want so many things. Why chokhmah is the first thing that we ask for? It's even more than that. Not destroy. You can't fix anything without chokhmah. You cannot emulate. You cannot copy God without wisdom. God is wisdom. Is the source of all wisdom. Chokhmah. We have to have a strong yearning, a strong desire for wisdom if we want to follow in the path of Hashem. The path of Hashem is so tricky because the Eight Sahara has put stumbling blocks on the way. He puts tricks on the way to make us think that we're doing a mitzvah. Really, we're doing an avera. Sometimes he makes us think this is an avera. Really, it's a mitzvah. If you don't have wisdom, you have no idea what you're doing in your life. Your whole life, you could be walking like a blind man. You know, when it comes to the midah of trust in Hashem, in order for you to build your trust in Hashem, the Rukhot Sadiqim gives a mashal, a beautiful mashal. One of the, the, the parables that he gives is, is a hundred blind men walking. Each blind man is holding the shoulders of the blind man in front of him. And each one thinks that the guy in front of him is guiding him. But really, there's only one guy that can see. And he's all the way in the front. But each blind man thinks, the guy in front of me is my leader. Because he, he's just blind, he doesn't know. And this guy is holding his shoulders and he's taking him. And that's how we are all walking in this world. Each one... I, I hold my hold on to my shoulders of my boss. I hold on to the shoulders of my wife. I hold on to the shoulders of my children and supporting me. Everybody has somebody that is helping him and somebody somehow involved. And without him, my life will not work. If he would leave, if he would die, God forbid, my life is over. But really, Hashem is the only one that is guiding us. This blindness, it's a blindness not of the eye. It's blindness of the brain. It's the blindness of our intellect. It's blindness of our understanding. What really makes the world tick? Is it our strength? Is it our wisdom? I know intellectually God runs the world, but yet still I cheat and lie and all say the truth when I need to when I need to get away with something. And I still have questions. Should I be honest? Should I, should I not be honest? Why do I have questions? Because I don't really know that God runs, runs the world. I say in my head, God runs the world. Thank God, thank God. I say, I say it. But I don't really live it. So the number one thing that we really have to ask is wisdom. The wisdom is Yad Shamayim. The wisdom is Yad Shamayim. The Gemara says in Masechet Shabbat, Hen Yirat Hashem Hi Chokhmah. Hen means one. The Gemara says there's only one thing that is wisdom in this world, and that's the fear of Hashem. What is the fear of Hashem going to do with wisdom? Fear of Hashem, you're going to have to be afraid. Hashem is going to punish you. Or you respect them properly. What's the God to do with wisdom? I always thought it just means in order for you to understand the greatness of Hashem and to respect them properly, you need to have wisdom. It's more than that. Hashem is wisdom. The source of Hashem. The Hashem, is, Hashem is, you cannot understand the ways of Hashem without the Torah. That's why Hashem says, I, brought, I created the Yitzhahara. And I created the Torah as medication. So the Torah has two powers. One power is like a laundry machine. It purifies the Tum'ah inside of you from the Avod that you're doing. It cleanses you. The Torah has the power of cleansing. But then there's another power that the Torah has. Besides cleansing you, besides making you a vessel that can hold the holiness of Hashem, the Torah also has the power of making you, like changing you, and making you like a godly person. 
somebody who sees the spiritual behind. There's a book called The World Mask. It was written by Rabbi Akiva Tetz. It's a very good book to read to help you build your trust in Hashem. I read it many, many years ago. Hashem made this world as a mask over Him. Hashem is behind this world and He makes the puppet move. And like that little child that thinks that the puppet is alive, the mother knows it's not. There's somebody on top moving it. Hashem made the whole world look like there's, like the, the world is moving by, by itself. And we're the children, that, the stupid children that are looking and seeing. The world is moving by itself. But really, everything that is moving is with, with Hashem. So when He's trying to hurt you, you know Hashem is making you move now. He's not trying to hurt you. He cannot hurt you. Hashem is making Him come to you. Why? Because of your deeds, your mitzvot, your avirot. So, the wisdom is really the key to everything in our lives. How do you get this wisdom? It means, in order for you to understand the greatness of Hashem and to respect Him properly, you need to have wisdom. It's more than that. Hashem is wisdom. The source of Hashem. Hashem is, Hashem is, you cannot understand the ways of Hashem without the Torah. That's why Hashem says, I created the Yitzhahara. And I created the Torah as medication. So the Torah has two powers. One power is like a laundry machine. It purifies the Tum'ah inside of you from the Avod that you're doing. It cleanses you. The Torah has the power of cleansing. But then there's another power that the Torah has. Besides cleansing you, besides making you a vessel that can hold the holiness of Hashem, the Torah also has the power of making you, like changing you. And making you like a godly person. Somebody who sees the spiritual behind. There's a book called The World Mask. It was written by Rabbi Akiva Tetz. It's a very good book to read to help you build your trust in Hashem. I read it many, many years ago. Hashem made this world as a mask over Him. Hashem is behind this world. And He makes the puppet move. And like that little child that thinks that the puppet is alive. The mother knows it's not. There's somebody on top moving it. Hashem made the whole world look like there's like the, the world is moving by, by itself. And we're the children, uh, the stupid children that are looking and seeing. The world is moving by itself. But really, everything that is moving is with, with Hashem. So when He's trying to hurt you, you know Hashem is making you move now. He's not trying to hurt you. He cannot hurt you. Hashem is making Him come to you. Why? Because of your deeds, your mitzvot, your avirot. So the wisdom is really the key. To everything in our lives. How do you get this wisdom? Belev kol chacham lev natati chokmah. Hashem says in the heart of every wise heart, I gave wisdom. You have to have wisdom in order for you to receive wisdom. How do you get this wisdom? So the Chazonish writes, the very interesting letter that the Chazonish wrote, it's um, in, in, a, in a, he has a very thin book called the uh, uh, and he talks about different topics over there. One of the letters he writes over there, he says, The power of yearning, desire, opens up the brain, and opens up the heart, to swallow wisdom, understanding from within understanding, and knowledge, the desire for it, the yearning for it, if you will want wisdom like you want money, like you want treasure, you wake up early in the morning, you go to sleep late in the night worrying about your parnasa. If you would worry, if you would want, if you would desire, yearning, if you want, that's all imtevakshena is the secret. Do you want wisdom? If you do, why? You have to know why you want wisdom. Most, most people want wisdom for the wrong reasons. But do you want wisdom? Do you wake up early in the morning? I have an uncle of mine that became religious a um, couple of months after I married my wife. About 25 years ago, he became religious. He started reading the book about the Bet Yosef, his life. And he heard a Goisha woman sing. And he said to himself, how could there be a woman that has such a beautiful voice and there's no God in the world? That's what he said to himself. No, my uncle. He read the Bet Yosef's book, and then he heard this Goyesh woman sing. And he started investigating into religion. Within three months, he threw his whole life, and he was an atheist. He was the type of guy, he hated me for marrying my wife, because now he cannot touch her. 
No, he was from her side. So the three months, he threw everything away. He started waking up at four o'clock in the morning every single day before he goes to work. Four o'clock in the morning, pounding all the Musal books, all the Halakha books, getting Chavrutos, connecting himself to big rabbis, like big, big rabbis from Israel, because he had money. He was able to connect himself to big rabbis and bring them to sleep in his house and learn from them and talk to them and let Gedolim come to his house. And years later, I thought he was going to get burned out. How much can you do this? Years later, I call him. I didn't see him in a couple of years. Years later, I call him and I tell him, no, you still wake up at four o'clock in the morning to learn. He goes, of course. Of course. He still wakes up for years. He's been doing it. What's, what's Pshan? He has a strong desire for his life. He took both his kids from Solomon Shechter. They were in a reforms conservative school. He put them in Chafetz Chaim. They became Talmidei Chachamim. We learned in the Kolol over there. He had a strong desire. And he didn't give up. He just get, kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. Not giving up. Every day, waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Every Shulchan Shabbat, he speaks for like 25 minutes. He says, Divrei Torah. He doesn't stop. Every, shulchan, every table Shabbat, people are sick and tired of listening to his Divrei Torah. He does not stop. Divrei Torah, Divrei Torah. Now it's only him and his wife. So she has no choice. All he talks about is Torah the whole time. What a desire. That's what you're doing for learning Torah. You're doing, you, have to, you have to make your Torah much more than your business. Because your business is here to support you in this physical world. A couple of years and it's over. Your Torah is going to be your sustenance for eternity. You have to have a strong desire to learn Torah. After I give my speeches in shul about learning Torah, a couple of guys came to me, Rabbi, help me find the Harusa. That's what you do when your Parnassah comes? Help me find Parnassah. You go get it. You go get it. You make it happen. You have to have the strong yearning to learn Torah. There's more over here that we have to discuss, but I don't have time now. Rabbi